how many effects pedals do you actually need? In this video, I'm gonna try and answer that by breaking it down into five different pedal board setups, from small pedal boards to large pedal boards to multi effects and some other stuff. I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of each setup so that you can decide exactly how many pedals you need for what you're trying to do. We'll start with a small pedal board setup. And for me, this is all about simplicity and ease of use and just getting the essentials on the board. So I've decided to go with all Boss pedals because they're super simple and easy to use and they sound pretty good too. Um, so at the heart of this, I feel like it's the overdrive. That's what I'm using for that kind of valve amp type overdrive sound. So here's my clean sound. And here's the overdrive. Really nice sort of low gain sound. For the high gain sounds, I'll use the distortion. Once I've got overdrive and distortion covered, I feel like my next priority is to fill out the sound a little bit. It's a little bit dry at the moment. So uh, I'll use a short delay on this, but you could use reverb as well or a longer delay, whatever you want, but this is with delay. That it. You know, it sounds a bit dry. The tuner's essential really. As far as power goes, um, I think it's okay to use a daisy chain power supply when you've only got four pedals. Like, you might get a bit of noise if you're being really fussy, especially when you've got the distortion and the overdrive on at the same time. But if it's ever okay to use a daisy chain power supply, it's with a small pedal board like this. So the pros for the small pedal board are that it's simple and easy to use. That means you spend more time playing and less time messing around with sounds. And for that reason, it's also great for practicing as well. It's reasonably priced and it's nice and compact. It's so compact that I don't think you really even need the pedal board if you're just using this at home. You can just set them up on the floor and you'll be fine. The downsides of this setup are probably gonna be that it only has space for the bare essentials. You're not gonna have that much room for more unique sounds and specialized effects. The other thing is that it's just not very versatile. Particular styles of guitar playing will require certain effects and we just can't fit them on a small board like this very easily. So this is what I'm calling my medium sized pedal setup. Uh, I've still got what I had before. I'm just using the Catlin Bread pedal as my low gain overdrive pedal. Um, it's supposed to sound like a Marshall amp. Just lightly overdriven. Um, I can use the Tube Screamer as a heavy overdrive sound. I can use the Rat for my distortion sound in place of the DS1 we had before. I've still got my delay, I've still got a tuner, but I can get a few other effects like chorus and flanger in there for some nice whooshy sound. You know, you can just get some more, there's room for a few more specialist effects. So the other one I've got is um, an octave pedal, so you can get nice weird pitch effects and stuff, so. As for power on a medium sized board like this, you're probably gonna need an isolated power supply. They are a bit more expensive, but they're really good, really quiet. I thought it'd also be worth mentioning that with a medium sized board, you can expand it quite easily just with a couple of pedals either side set on the floor. So here I've put a wah pedal on the right and my amp switcher on the left. It just expands it a bit without having to expand the board itself and the size of the board. So the good things about the medium sized board are that I think it's the perfect balance of being not too big and not too small. It doesn't take up too much floor space on stage, yet it's still enough room to have some of the more interesting and unique pedals on the board at the same time. So it's a good all rounder. It's not super complex, but not overly simple either. And that makes it good for practicing at home and on stage use as well. I suppose the downsides are that it's starting to get expensive now especially if you want a good power supply. And it's still not super versatile. If you play a lot of different styles, you might find yourself always just wanting one more pedal or taking pedals on and off the board and switching them around a lot. So this is my large pedal board setup. Um, you can get obviously get larger pedal boards than this. Um, this is just the largest pedal board that I can justify for the types of gigs that I do. Uh, so a lot of the time I'll find myself doing pub or club gigs with a big band. 
and this is about as big as I can justify getting on stage without cheesing people off. Uh, so if you're setting up a home pedal board, then sky's the limit, you can have a really big pedal board. Or if you're playing really big venues um, with big stages, then by all means get a big pedal board. You know, it, there's no harm in it. Um, but be aware of stage space and the kind of problems you might run into. Now, the good thing about using a large pedal board is now we've got loads of sounds. Uh, so with this one, I'll just try as quickly as I can to sort of run you through what I've chosen. Um, so I've got two different overdrive pedals. These are the light overdrive sounds. Now I've got a Marshall sound and a Fender Bassman type overdrive. They're just subtly different. I've still got my overdrive, my distortion. I can fit on a fuzz though now, um, a clean boost. Um, I've still got my delay, but now I've got a tap tempo on it as well. I can squeeze that on there. Um, I've got my chorus and flanger there. I can fit on um, my amp switcher and wah pedal onto the board now. They're not off the board. Um, I've got a compressor. I've got a funky old uh, phaser. I can do stuff like that. Um, Univive, kind of, I use that for Hendrix and stuff. <laughs> those kind of things. Um, I've still got my octave. There's just so many sounds you can get with a setup like this. I feel really um, at ease when I've got this pedal board with me. This buffer pedal though is necessary. When you have this many true bypass pedals, uh, you'll run through them all into your amp and what happens is it's like running a really long cable. You end up losing treble. So you'll plug into your amp and you'll set the treble quite high or just a tiny bit higher than you normally would. And then what happens when you turn on a pedal, especially at the beginning of the chain, um, it'll sound super, super bright because what that pedal is doing is acting as a buffer when you switch it on. Uh, so it, suddenly that pedal will sound super harsh and bright. I was getting a problem with my overdrive pedals thinking, why are they sounding so harsh? And that was why. So once I put a buffer pedal at the beginning and change this. I know it says true bypass this flashback delay, but it's uh, set to a buffered bypass. Once I put those in, it evened out all the sound and I didn't get any problems anymore with harsh sounding pedals. The other solution is to use a switcher. Uh, so with those, you have a loop that's sent out to each pedal or each group of pedals. Um, and when that loop is off, the pedals are completely taken out of the loop. So it's more like uh, plugging directly into your amp when all the pedals are off. Uh, so those chains aren't, in, aren't active at all. Also good if you've like broken a, uh, a patch cable or something like that in your setup. It's easier to troubleshoot where that problem is when you use a switcher. Uh, also good because you can digitally program them. It's like using a multi-effects. You can um, set presets onto the selections of pedals you can switch so you're not quite tap dancing as much. Uh, problem is though, and the reason I don't have one, is they're really expensive and they take up even more pedal board space. So that's the reason I don't have one at the moment, um, but they are very good. As for power, there's 16 pedals on this board and four of them are running at 18 volts. Now that's a lot of power. I, don't, I couldn't find a power supply that uh, powered all those things for me. So I had to go with um, the gig rigs power supplies um, and they're like a modular system. Um, you could get multiples power supplies, but it just means faffing about with lots of different plugs. Uh, with this, uh, I can plug in one power supply and it will power everything. They're expensive and they take a bit of time to set up and figure out what you need. Uh, but they are really good. So the best things about the large pedal board are that now we've got a much wider range of sounds to choose from. It's much more versatile. We've also got loads more space for unique effects. If you want to be more creative, you've got space for those more wacky effects. There's less need for swapping pedals out constantly. It's much more likely that you can just get a board, pack it full of pedals and forget about it. That makes it really good for a permanent home studio setup as well, where floor space is less of an issue and you can just have a large pedal board set up all the time at home. The downsides, I suppose that it's very expensive to set up a board like this. Even the patch cables end up costing an awful lot, not to mention the, the power supply, the board itself, and all the pedals. 
can also be a bit too large for some small stages, especially if you have a lot of members in a band. Faulty cables are a nightmare as well with a big board like this. It takes ages to troubleshoot them at a gig. In my opinion as well, it's not ideal for practicing at home. You might find yourself constantly playing with sounds and researching different pedals rather than actually focusing and improving your playing skills. So the next type of setup I wanna talk about is the multi-effects setup. Now, I know this little unit won't really do the approach that much justice. Um, if you're looking for a professional solution like this, look at um, things like the Line 6 Helix and the Boss GT1000. They're really good uh, units to look at for something much more professional. Um, but even in a budget unit like this, I'll show you some of the sounds um, that I couldn't get on the large pedal board that I was using before and give you an idea of the quality that you get from them because it's pretty good. So I'll show you the acoustic simulator. And it's all right, it'll get you through. So um, there's a whammy pedal as well. I couldn't fit that on my board, um, even on the large one. So that's fun to play around with. You can get all these wacky sounds. and just have fun with that on a solo or whatever. Um, the other good thing about them is that uh, they all come with a cab simulator of some sort. Um, so you can plug directly into the PA, just have a monitor on stage or use in-ear monitoring um, and you're good to go. Uh, the standalone kind of overdrives and choruses, modulations and delays are all as you expect. They, they sound pretty good most of the time. So the pros of the multi-effects setup are that it's very low price. Even the high-end units can be a fraction of the cost of a large pedal board setup. They're the most versatile of all pedal boards, I think, and any style of playing will be fine. If versatility is important, then multi-effects will be able to do the job no problem. There's no need for expensive power supplies and patch cables, so that saves an awful lot of cost and improved reliability issues as well. You can use patches to select lots of pedals at the same time, like having an expensive switcher that I talked about in the large pedal board, but it's all included within the multi-effects unit itself now. Some multi-effects can integrate well with stomp box setups, like the Line 6 Helix can patch in individual stomp boxes, or like the TC Electronics Plethora X5, which lets you add the flexibility of multi-effects with your existing stomp box setup. So the downsides of these units, I suppose, are that they're complicated to use a lot of the time. They have a lot of menus, a lot of programming and presets involved, and it's just often difficult to quickly fine tune a setting, especially when you're on stage playing live. There's also the fact that emulations are not the real thing. They often never sound quite right. You'll most likely still crave the real thing, even if it's just for psychological reasons. And lastly, having so many sounds available, I think, can often be a hindrance to productivity in practice. So, like with the large pedal boards, the amounts of sounds and options available can actually be overwhelming and distracting from the fundamentals of actually being productive and making music. Remember, if you're finding this video useful, do like and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. So I thought the other approach worth mentioning was using no pedals at all, so just manipulating the controls on the guitar and using your hands properly. So with this, I've turned my amp up pretty loud. I can get a pretty decent rock sound with that. And if I want a darker sort of rock blues sound, I just go to neck pickup. And it's there. If I want a clean sound, I'll just roll the volume control back a little bit. If I want it brighter, say for a funk sound, I'll just go to middle pickup or bridge pickup. And it's a pretty decent funk sound. If I want a jazz tone, I'll go back to neck pickup and roll the tone down a little bit. Uh, that sort of stuff. And I can get quite easily back to my rock sound really quickly. And this way really helps you focus on the important stuff, how you play the instrument and how creative you can be um, with a limited amount of technology. 
you know it's um, it's a great way to play and practice and really good fun so um, I recommend this approach almost above all the other 